What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today we are checking this, the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 Dodge Challenger. And this is a TA package car, which stands for Trans Am, which is a throwback to the 1970 Dodge Challenger Trans Am, which was a homologation car. They built uh, 2,500 of those. And uh, well, this is a throwback to that car with some decals, uh, some nice wheels on there and some details in the grill as well. So today I'm going to check it out. I'll show you all the cool stuff you get on the TA package and then we'll take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for an Autobahn blast. So let's start at the front. I mean, we've done a couple of challengers in the past still. It's basically still the same car as it was 10 years ago and still it is freaking awesome. Still people just stop, look at you. It is a head turner, people take photos, they want to talk to you. It is a very weird thing here in Europe and you don't see that many of them and people seem to really, really like them. This version, I have to say, the TA package, the differences are not that big but you do definitely gain some presence because you have this retro grill, which I really like. So this is for the TA package, this bezel design grill and this classic Challenger badge in the grill as well. You also get these illuminated air catcher headlights. So this is an intake, which is illuminated on the inside as well with a TA badge. I hope you guys can see that. Wait a sec, let me just get in there. I hope you guys can see that TA there. And it is illuminated on the inside, which is super cool. You get this nice splitter as standard. Uh, same bezel design down there as well. And a nice hood scoop as well. So you have this super imposing retro-licious front end. I really feel like this is one of the best retro designs ever because it sort of still looks like a 70s car, but it also looks modern and it has held up nicely, I think. So these wheels are specific to the TA package as well. Low gloss crystal aluminum wheels, uh, which basically means that it's a matte black. Very nice design though. And behind that we've got Brembo brakes. Quite a, a small disc, not perforated, nothing, but they actually work pretty well. And then around that we've got Pirelli P0s. And these are, are these all seasons? Not sure. I don't think so. Normally they come on all seasons. Uh, 20 inch wheels with 275 tires at the front. So quite a big front tire, but lovely wheel, suits the car really well. Uh, you get a matte black painted hood as well. And a little sticker there. You get this TA livery on the side as well. Uh, the car comes courtesy of AEC. European importer for Dodge and Ram. They always supply us with these cars. So big thanks to them. Go check them out if you're interested in a Dodge or a Ram. You get a black roof as well, a black deck lid and a nice little spoiler. Uh, the, the black stuff, the satin black stuff is all part of the TA package. So the hood, the roof and the deck lid. The spoiler you get on a regular Challenger as well. And then at the rear we've got, 275s as well and because this is basically a two-door charger you also get a massive boot it is such a practical car it's very large of course so no wonder you have a big boot lovely rear lights as well nice little exhaust it sounds amazing this color by the way is f8 green the best color for a challenger if you ask me absolutely love that you also get this black fuel filler cap on the TA package and you also get another nice little touch. Which is a cold air intake specifically for the TA package. And I think that covers everything on the, the outside and the engine department. Uh, you also get body color mirrors on the TA package. That is basically it. Then we have some more like safety systems you get like blind spot monitoring and stuff like that. Uh, and some white faces for the dials, the, the instrument cluster. But as you can see the 5.7 liter V8 Hemi engine, this is the base engine, uh, 377 horsepower, 542 newton meters of torque. 
Is it fast? Not really. But I have to say, it has enough power to make sure that it doesn't feel slow or really underpowered. Uh, but it's not fast, it's not a quick car. Uh, but it is very nice because you have this naturally aspirated engine that you can just, you can actually use it because it's not super, super powerful. You can use the power because it's not like going too fast all the time. Okay, we also have the remote start of course, so hit that button twice. Lovely startup. Proper exhaust as well. Look at that. That is how you make an exhaust. Just two small rear silencers. Oh. How did they get this car to sound this good with the German license plate? I'm not really sure about that, but. It sounds so good. Oh, absolutely love it. Oh, we've got some TA embroidery on the seats as well. And as I said, white faces for the instrument cluster. Looks super cool. In here, more retro design, of course. You even get a little retro Challenger badge right there. Um, you do feel, you know, it's age in here. It, it's been around for a while and uh, you do feel that, especially if you go into reverse and check out that rear view camera. Ooh, that looks, that looks like a TV from the 90s, uh, which is not great. Other than that, everything actually works really well. It's sturdy, you have everything you need. And then we've got a sport button down here, which goes into sport mode, traction control sport mode as well. And then we have this super track pack Hit that and you get Deutsche performance control so you can set up your driving modes. You can set up sport mode, all the things you want in that mode. And you can also do your launch control in here, your line lock. Launch control actually allows you to set the RPM from 1500 to 3000. And line lock is basically a burnout mode, which is amazing. And you also have performance pages with more info. But you basically have everything you need. It's a nice interior. It's spacious, even though it's a very narrow front window. You have, it, it's a really nice place to be. I, I quite like it. So let's go for a little drive. We've got the eight speed automatic gearbox, torque flight, love that name. And uh, you also have a manual gearbox available in the US actually, but I'm not sure that they also offer that in Europe. Would be quite fun as well, but I think this suits the car a bit better. So it's not really like the burnout machine a Hellcat is, but it has enough power to casually have some fun. It's enough to do a burnout or a donut. Um, power slides are a bit difficult. Oh, but it sounds so good. Okay, so we found this closed road. You might remember this if you've been watching long enough. This is where we used to record the sound videos, but it's closed now, but we were able to get here. So there's no one here. No one will be here because it's a, a holiday today. Um, so I'm just going to demonstrate that line lock to you guys. Put it in drive, then go to line lock, activate line lock. I have to apply brake pressure at least 80 bar apparently. Then I press and hold the OK button on the steering wheel. So that holds the front brakes. I can release the brake. Now apply throttle. It holds the front brakes while letting me do a massive burnout. I release that button. Oh, 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 that is so massive. This is what I love about US cars. They still know how to have fun with a car. Launch control also works really easily. Just activate launch control up there. You can set the RPM. We keep it a bit lower because otherwise it really struggles for traction. Full throttle, release, 1500 RPM. Shifts up quite early and then you're off. As I said, it's not like the crazy power slide drift machine. 
like the Challenger Hellcat, but it does have enough power to, to have some fun. It, it really does. Oh, and that sound is so good. And you get a nice little burble on the upshift. There's also some sound I don't really like though. We do have quite a bit of wind noise that's coming from the right front area, which we don't seem to be able to pinpoint. But as long as you keep that throttle down, you know, you don't really hear that wind noise that much, so just do that. Uh, another thing I don't really like is that if you have it in normal mode and you drive it in, you know, regular traffic, it has cylinder deactivation. So if you're just puddling along right now, it, it shut down, I think, four cylinders and it becomes really rough and a bit jerky. It's not really running smooth and it feels like you get a bit more and then a bit less and then a bit more power. It's very weird. I think they just installed it because they have to and then they thought, okay, whatever. It works, that's enough. You get this sound and then you get this like, rrr, rrr, rrr. it's really weird. Oh, that was a very old Porsche tractor. Cool. Uh, anyway, sound is the thing this car is about. It's not really about performance, it's just a cruiser that produces an amazing sound. It really does. It's like an old school V8 sound. But you have like this modern shift, this it reminds us of the C63, the 6.2 liter. It has that, that same like shift sound. Amazing. I do feel like the gearbox is not as snappy as like on it as it is with the Hellcat and even the 392, uh, the scat pack we drove. I feel like that gearbox was a bit sharper. Maybe that's also because this has been set up to be more of a touring car. Uh, we don't have adaptive dampers. Damping is quite firm, but that does mean that you still maintain some body control and that the car is not like all over the place, which you would expect, but actually handling is pretty good. So here we go. Full so on the Autobahn, as I said, it's not the quickest car. It's not a super fast car. Uh, it moves. We did a 100 to 200 run in like 15 seconds. So it's not a slow car by any means, but it's not as fast as you might expect looking at it. It handles itself really well at high speeds. And again, those brakes are really nice actually. Pedal feels good. It's a nice firm pedal. But you're never really overwhelmed with the power it produces. But it's still nice, you have that V8 soundtrack. I do feel like you need quite a bit of space to get to the top speed, which apparently is around 250 kilometers an hour. We're hopefully going to see where the limiter kicks in right now. But it's very nice and stable. That's a shift. 246. I think that's it. 247. So, <laughs> that's fine for lukewarm performance cars. Let's turn around here. Uh, it is, <laughs> it's a very nice handling car. A little pop on the downshift as well. Yeah, it's, it's a, just a very fun car. So, 
in conclusion, just a car that you can have fun with. It's not crazy fast, it's not scary fast, not like the, the Hellcat, which is just all over the place all the time, way too quick for regular roads. Um, this is just a way to have fun with the V8, which does not break the bank. Uh, it's not the same like crazy fuel consumption as a Hellcat either. And it's a very rare thing to see, a base car that is so much fun and just works so well. Of course, if your base car has a 5.7 liter V8, yeah, it's, it's going to be better than other base cars, but still, <laughs> it's really not fast. Oh, but it's so much fun. I absolutely love it. So big thanks to AEC for dropping the car off at our office. Really, really appreciate that. Uh, it's an amazing car. Go check it out. To you guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. You can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle. It helps us out. Go check out this video on the right or this playlist of reviews on the left if you want to watch more. See you at the next one. Bye.